This is my Salento. Sun, sea, and windswept olive trees. Proud guardians of our plains, for centuries they have resisted weather, drought, and neglect. Today they must face a new challenge the Xylella emergency. Only yesterday, terminally ill trees lifted their arms to the sky. Today, their lifeless skeletons march through a ghostly landscape. Research has definitively proven that the leaf drying syndrome named Codiro is caused by the Xylella fastidiosa bacteria. We ask for confirmation from Francesco Porcelli, professor of entomology at the University of Bari. Yes, certainly. The principal actor in the disease appears to be Xylella fastidiosa, but the name Codiro indicates the specific strain of the bacteria that causes the leaf drying syndrome in our olive trees. So, what is Xylella fastidiosa? It's a bacteria that lives in a plant xylem. The xylem is a part of the circulatory system that a plant uses to transport water and nutrients from the soil into the leaves. The liquid that blows up the xylem layer is called sap. After photosynthesis takes place in the leaves, the sap flows back down to the roots in veins called the phloem. Look at this cross section of a tree trunk. The phloem on the outside is living tissue. The xylem, composed of dead cells, is located more to the inside of the tree where it is better protected. What's special about Xylella is that it has adapted to live in a very nutrient-poor environment like the xylem. In fact, sap is almost entirely water. How does Xylella spread? The only way Xylella can move from plant to plant is by insects that feed on sap in the xylem. Instead of a mouth, these insects have a sort of syringe connected to an air pump. When they feed on an infected plant, they suck in colonies of bacteria. Then, when they move to a new plant, they inject the bacteria cells into the new plant's xylem. Which insects transmit Xylella in Salento? The only species that has so far shown the ability to transmit the Codiro strain of the Xylella is Philenus pumarius, the meadow spittlebug. Ah, the common spittlebug! Look at this electron microscope photo. Do you see those little lozenge shapes? Those are bacterial cells or aggregates of bacterial cells in the mouth pump of Philenus spumarius. That's what Xylella fastidiosa looks like. Everyone knows that Philenus spumarius is native to the old world, described way back in 1758 by Linnaeus. It has attracted the attention of geneticists for the incredible variety of types, but it was never studied very much because it was never known to cause damage. But now experiments have proven that our spiedelbug transmits Xylella fastidiosa from an olive tree to another. So, now it's absolutely necessary to understand the biological cycle of Philenus spumarius. Our data 
shows the Filenus completes one generation per year. In this part of Salento, the mild Mediterranean climate allows their eggs, led in grasses and weeds that previous autumn, to begin opening in late February or early March. The young feed on weeds, then expel excess water and works to form the spittal. Within this protective covering, the nymphs grow to adulthood. That's why they're called spittlebacks. The spittal guarantees the young a special environment they can survive in. At the end of April or beginning of May, the adult insect leaves its protective coating behind. So, by May, the adults are living in the weeds, aren't they? That's right. But here in Salento, in May, the weeds begin to dry out. Because of this, we think that the adults, who must keep feeding to survive, move up to the crowns of olive trees, where they find both humidity and fresh new buds rich in sap. At the end of August, they return to the weeds which are now sprouting tender and succulent new growth. From October to November, a female spittlebug will lay between 3 and 5,000 eggs on the weeds, brush or on the ground, which are protected by a waxy sheath. Listen to what we have learned from our friend Daniele Cornara, who has just come back from nine months studying at the University of California, Berkeley, in the lab directed by Rodrigo Almeida and Alexander Purcell. Philaeus pomarius is a lazy animal. He eats sitting down. Although able to fly, when disturbed, he usually prefers to get away by jumping, leaping. That's why he is famous for each hiking. In fact, he usually travels on clothing, in carts, or other mechanical means of movement, whatever the fastest way of getting from place to place. But why do some people still think that the drying out of olive trees is not caused by Xylella fastidiosa? We asked Giovanni Martelli, Emeritus Professor of Plant Pathology at the University of Bari. Who would know better than him? The presence of the bacteria has been confirmed by every technique available to bacteriology. Highly convincing data prove the correlation between the presence of the bacteria and the drying syndrome in trees. It is clear that the spread of the bacteria goes step by step with the spread of the disease. But when did the bacteria come to Puglia? Evidence shows that Xylella fastidiosa was only recently introduced here. The NA analysis reveals that all the genome sequences of the bacteria found in Salento are virtually identical, so there must be only one strain. In America, on the other hand, where Xylella was first identified a century ago, there are at least four subspecies of Xylella, each of which is further divided into many strains. The result of a lengthy process of evolution and biogeographic differentiation. It takes approximately 15 years gradual genetic mutation to generate a separate bacterial population. Therefore, if we find only one population here, in the area of Gallipoli, it could mean that our Cordero strain was introduced here within the last 15 years. And where did the bacteria come from? Again, the DNA analysis shows that the genome of our strain of Xylella is almost exactly the same as the subspecies that infects oleander plants in Costa Rica. Considering that 42 million ornamental plants have been imported from Costa Rica, it is very probable that the bacteria found ideal conditions to grow and thrive in our climate. These invasive organisms are a very worrisome threat. The red palm weevil has killed our palm trees, 
The orange spiny whitefly is causing terrible damage to our citrus trees and now Xylella is wiping out our ancient olive trees. Giovanni Melcarne, coordinator of a growers organization named The Voice of the Olive, is very concerned. He fears Xylella might mean the end of olive production in Salento. The only hope, he says, may be to find cultivars of olive that are tolerant or resistant to the presence of Xylella. Yes, yes, the cultivar Lecino, for example, shows some symptoms of drying, but overall maintains a healthy state of growth. This might suggest that some varieties of olive trees are able to coexist with the bacteria. But look out, the problem doesn't concern only olive trees. EFSA has produced a long list of plant species that can be hosts of the subspecies of Xylella found in Salento, including cherry and almond trees which are just as important as olives to agriculture in Apulia and bordering regions. So we have a serious emergency! Ah, now I understand why Giuseppe Surico, professor of plant pathology at the University of Florence, uh, dealt in an article with a war to be waged with almost military logic. And everyone needs to take part in this war to restore normality to Salento. So that what is taking place in Salento doesn't take place in other parts of Puglia, other regions of Italy, other European countries or the Mediterranean basin. So that what's happening to olive trees doesn't happen to other plant species. Let's hear the words of Thomas Simpson, a professor at Northwestern University who offers a perspective from abroad. Will we be able to stop arguing and work together in order to get what everybody wants, which is to save the olive trees? Because everybody has the same basic goal. We must do everything we can, because these giants Symbols of peace and sharing between all the people of the Mediterranean, symbols of strength and attachment to the land, deserve to be saved. It's our duty to try, so the rising sun can forever shine its light on our olive trees.